Hey folks, here is your starter A-frame tutorial. So I'm going to be starting with the same starter file that uh, y'all are going to have. And I'm going to be using a couple different uh, link resources that are also in the starter file. So um, you have the A-frame um, homepage, which you're going to be just kind of hanging out on for homework and just kind of getting comfortable with um, what you can do in here. Um, and then you have the A-Frame School, which has like lots of steps in linked projects that you can work towards. And then we have the, um, the actual reference doc page. Okay, so we're just going to jump right into it. So A-Frame is actually, check it out, it's actually a, a JS library. See that? All right, but it uses HTML entities. Um, body is an HTML entity. Uh, and maybe let me back up a little bit. To say it uses HTML entities is probably incorrect. It uses A-frame entities, okay? So you're going to actually be creating um, shapes and objects and references via a um, via HTML, but you're going to be using a HTML entities from the A-frame library. So the first one that we will always need, um, and I'm just on the, the reference page here, uh, and I'm going to go all the way down to um, primitives. And I want to look for... Actually, let's just go to... Let's go to introduction here, okay? Um, so the thing, that we, the thing that we want to grab is this um, scene, okay? A scene. Um, and if you just go through this, it'll kind of show you like lots of different examples. I would highly encourage y'all to just maybe kind of hang out on this page. Um, okay, so the first thing that we need is we're going to definitely need this A-frame script. Okay, you can get that from the Getting Started pages. Um, it'll just sort of walk you through exactly how to do it. Here we go. Here's the link. You can just grab that. Um, it's a CDN, so you don't have to really download anything. Uh, you can download it here if you really want to. Um, but the first thing that we're going to need is we are definitely going to need this scene. Okay? So everything needs to be wrapped in the entity a scene. Okay? So we're going to put that inside the body. It's kind of like the body, but it's like a frame's body. Okay, so everything needs to be wrapped in a scene, and I like to just kind of have this hang out with body. Okay, so the first thing that we will call inside of a scene is let's take a look at, um, we're just going to grab a plane. So a plane. And a plane is just going to be like, you can use it as a ground plane if you'd like. And um, I just want to go over how to use this reference page. Um, I've left you some comments here about all the different attributes that these entities have. Okay, so most of the primitive shape ones, you can use these as attributes, but you can also, and again, just to remind you, like anything with an equal sign is an attribute. So the search is an attribute of the script entity. Okay, so the same way that HTML works, A-frame also works that way. So the A-plane has um, different attributes that we can use. Um, and if you scroll down here, uh, it'll tell you all the attributes that you can use and also its default value. All right, so like color, the default's going to be white. Um, let's see. metalness. I'm not really sure what that means. That'll be zero. Um, so you can try to invoke any of these roughness. Um, obviously search is what we're going to be using to, um, give materials. The width is obviously going to be the width or the height. You can make it into a wireframe by saying true, you know, so there's a line width. If you want to use wireframe, you can, you can change all of these. All right. But these are the, the set, the default values. Um, and then for these attributes, when you're using this reference page, it'll usually tell you like some helpful hints. So like, for instance, most people are going to be using uh, a plane for a ground plane. 
And um, the way that you can get it to paralyze to the ground is to put it at negative 90 on the x-axis, okay? And the way that this works is it's it's just like, you know, your coordinate, your coordinate positioning, your Cartesian coordinate plane, x, y, z. Okay, so I'll just grab this and throw it in here. All right, we'll do a plane and I'll indent this. And we can mix in some of these other attributes. Okay, so uh, we know that rotation is going to put it like parallel to the ground. And then we can do color. And you just do equals, quotes. Let me grab a color. Y'all know I like my, my neon green. Mm-hmm. That's the one. Okay, so give it a color and let's view it okay then let's also give it a height oops and let's just say like 10 and a width all right so we got our ground plane here we go all right, so if you want this plane to kind of like stretch forever, we can kind of move around it. All right, if we want this plane to, you know, go on forever, um, I would suggest doing like 100 by 100. So for the height and the width. All right, and that'll give you, you know, kind of this like nice horizon. Okay, so now that we have our plane, um, what we can do is we can start to place objects on it and we can actually start to work with a background. Next thing we're going to do is let's grab the a sky. Okay, um, so a sky is pretty easily, easy to work with. Um, if we just want a color, we just invoke a sky and then we use this color attribute. So uh, I'll do that before the plane. A dash sky. And then in the opening tag, we'll do color. And let's just do pink for now. Okay, so now you should have um, a plane and a sky. So two solid colors. All right, and this plane is actually, you know, you can kind of, I'm, I'm moving the um, arrow keys around, but my, my bottom plane is so big that um, it doesn't really look like I'm moving. Because uh, I also increase this, but you know, if we decrease this to like 10, we'll kind of be able to see that I can kind of track around this world. And it always kind of puts you at the zero point of the world. So unlike, you know, Unity, you won't go like crashing to the ground, which is kind of nice. All right, so what we'll do now is we're gonna add some primitive shapes. Um, and then, oh sorry, one other thing that you could do is you could also give a radius to the sky. It will accept a radius, so if we look here, um, you can give it a radius. It'll automatically go to 5,000, so if you want it to be bigger or smaller, you could just say that. Um, there's also, like, you know, different material shaders, um, different things that you can do with this. You could do opacity. Um, so, uh, or transparency. So lots of different options for your attributes in there, as with most of them. Uh, so you can give it a radius, just an FYI. Uh, you might want to try that out just to see if it will uh, kind of help with how your, um, your scene renders out. So let's grab some primitive shapes. So let's just start with sphere. Okay, so this is going to be the most basic example of a sphere. All right, so we'll stick with this yellow color and then give it a radius of five. But again, here are all the different um, here are all the different attributes that you can mix into sphere. All right, so oops, so we'll add a sphere. 
Okay, so we're going to um, add the sphere. And before we do that, let's take a look at, um, so I'm just on the docs page and I'm in the ba building a basic scene. And um, a thing that's probably important to note is that um, A-frame is measured in meters, okay? So you're literally saying 200 meters when you say 200 here. Um, you're literally saying rotate it negative 90 uh, meters, okay? Because this is VR space, right? So we're sort of like approximating real space. So these units are meters. Okay, so um, let's add our sphere. And let's take a look at the documentation before we do that. Okay, so we can just start um, just start with a really simple version here, and then let's go back to this page, and we'll talk about how to transform an entity in 3D space in a moment. So let's just invoke this entity here, okay? So we have a, uh, a sphere, which is going to be yellow and have a radius of 5 meters, okay? And because it has no position, we won't be able to see it just yet. Okay, because we're at zero space, the camera's at zero, 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 so we're not quite able to see it yet. So what we need to do is we need to move it around, and we need to think about um, how to transform it 3D. So this uh, this is representing the right hand, okay? Um, and so if you hold this in front of your screen, if you position your, your fingers like this, all right, um, with your middle finger like pointing parallel to a table, the pointer finger pointing straight up and down, and then the thumb pointing out, right? That is actually how you utilize the coordinate system, okay? So for instance, if you want a shape to be pushed in front of the camera, you need to give it a negative, all right? So, so we need to put a negative on the Z to sort of push that shape in front of the camera. So let's head here, and we'll give it a position. Okay, so we'll say 0, 0, and it goes x, y, z, and then we'll give it maybe like a negative 5. All right, so there is my sphere, but it's very large. So let's make it a bit smaller. Let's give it maybe a radius of like 0 0.5, so it'll be a half meter. All right, and then the 0 point for the sphere is, is going to be the center. This is cute, y'all. All right, so the zero point is going to be the center. And so if we want to move it up, uh, again, if we consult Y is going to be how we move it up and down. And then X is going to be how we sort of move it, um, so, like the, the two sides. Like if you put your hands out, that's X. Okay, so let's say on the Y, let's give it a 1. All right, so that'll put it one meter above the ground. Um, if you don't want it that high, you could do like 0 0.5, because again, these are really large units of measurement. And then one thing that we can also add on here is we can say it has a shadow. And so it should, zero, should cast a shadow, but maybe we can kind of solve that a little bit more later. I'm going to get rid of this. Okay, so we can start to now invoke some other shapes. So let's take a look at some of our other options. Let's try a box. All right, so again, here's all the good things that you can do with a box. All right, and um, we'll just start with a really simple version, so it'll just be a box. A dash box. Okay, and then uh, let's first give it a position. So maybe we want it to go right next to the sphere. So in that case, maybe we would give it uh, one meter over on the X. And then let's give it a color. Let's give it a better color. All 
Okay, so then it's going to be right next to the sphere. And if we want to rotate it, all right, cool. So now we have rotating shape there. And maybe we want to move it up a bit. So we'll go on the Y, give it like a two. All right, cool. And then we can kind of walk around it. View it a little bit. Okay, great. I've added one other thing in here for fun. So I've added this ring. It's got a, a color teal, an inner radius of 1.7, outer radius of two. I've given it a position and then I've given it this wireframe true. Uh, so that's how this is rendering out. All right. Um, and so you can actually do some really interesting things with that. You can create some like really interesting layered effects, right? So maybe we move this one. Maybe 4.5. Okay, and kind of come up with some like weird, weird layered effects. Um, and then we can also just some other things, obviously for your box, you can also give it like a width. Say two, and then, you know, if you want it to be more of a rectangle, maybe we could say two, and then the height. You can say like 0 0.5. That will change how your shapes render out, obviously. Okay, so just play around with those, get comfortable with that stuff. Um, but what I'm going to show you how to do now is we're going to talk about some lighting and we're going to talk about um, how to skin uh, your actual entities. Okay, so it's really similar to how we do color, right? Um, but instead of just using color here um, on your shapes, and I'm going to put this first. What we're going to do, let's throw this in the first position. What we're going to do is we're going to invoke this search attribute, okay? And the search attribute is what allows you, just like when you're using HTML and you search for images, right? IMG SRC. What we're going to put in here is we're going to put the link to an image that we are going to upload into Glitch, okay? So one of the things that you might want to take a look at is um, in the school, you have some options for some 360 images. So we can click on that. Or you can just Google 360 images. Um, I think this one's pretty weird. What's this? Are these this is cool. Yeah, let's go with this one. Okay, so um, how do I download this? Download. Let's do, we can maybe do the original, see how that works. Okay, and then I'm gonna head on over to Glitch and I'm going to go into assets and I'm going to upload the asset. All right, so my downloads, here's that image. I'm going to upload that. It's a pretty big image, it might take a minute. Okay, click on it, grab my link, and then I'll head over to the HTML and in the search attribute, I'm going to put that link. Okay, so now I should have my sphere should be covered in that 360 image. So if I get closer, I have this like perfectly wrapped 360 image. I can also, you know, depending on what you want, um, maybe that one will work better in the sky. So instead of a pink sky, we'll just leave sphere alone for a second.
we can have this really interesting image actually in our scene. Cool. And then if you mess with the radius, you'll get some different results, right? So maybe if we make this like a thousand, you'll get some uh, slightly different sizing results. So just some more things for you to play with. But this is what kind of a 360 image could do for you. Um, alternatively, you know, if you want something that is a bit more, so maybe let's throw this back in the sphere. You know, if you want something that's maybe a bit more atmospheric, Okay, so once you've downloaded your image, if you want to make some changes to it, if you're on a Mac, um, you can maybe just go in and mess with the colors if you'd like. Alright, so then we'll upload this one. So you can bring it into Photoshop and, you know, you can kind of mess with it. You can create your own 3D, 360 image. You can Google them, you know, however you want to get those. Hit copy. And then we will just add that into, so into our sky. We'll do SRC equals. All right, there we go. Now we've got a very weird situation. And then we can grab some other repeating texture. So you can put some repeating texture on your, oh, what happened to my, my sphere? Got lost. Oops, there we go. Um, so you can find some repeating texture, you know, uh, you can just look for some images and just save them, upload them. This is pretty cool. Actually, I wonder if I can just use the copy image address. So let's try that. So I'll just copy the image address for that. And we'll go into plane and we'll do SRC equals. Let's try that. So you can get that to work. And just make sure that you have your spaces between the different attributes. Okay, that didn't want to work. So maybe you do need to download them. So let's try that. So we just save image as. And I'll just delete these later because I'm going to be I'm uploading them all to my um, assets folder here. So we'll throw it in here like we've been doing. And then again, if you want to bring that in and edit it, make the colors a little wackier, I obviously encourage this. Oh, well, it's going to have that weird, okay, let's delete this. And then let's open it up in preview. Let's crop this. So I'm just going to crop it so that I can get the, that weird mark off the bottom. Go in here, hit crop, and then, I don't know, since we're here, let's make it a little weirder. Save it, and then let's upload it again. I think you gotta go to upload asset. I don't think it likes it when you drop it in there. All right. Grab this friend. And then let's put that in the search attribute for the plane. Again, make sure that you have your spaces between your attributes. Whoa. Okay, and so that 
image is pretty huge, so I think what you would want to do is go in and make the image itself smaller. No, it's pretty small. Maybe we'll deal with uh, how to make it repeat in a different way in another, because uh, I'm just not really liking this here. Um, but we'll make it repeat in a different way in, in another tutorial, but I think that's good enough to start with. Okay, so the only other thing that we want to do is um, let's get some lights. Okay, so let's head on over to the documentation page and let's look for a light. Okay, so there's a couple different types of lights. Um, there are um, point lights and then there's ambient lights. Okay, so point lights are going to be more like spotlights, and then um, ambient lights are going to be like just sort of like color the whole situation. Okay, so it, we get a default lighting uh, that always comes from the top left, but let's add some of this. So this is going to be um, a blue light, a blue point light that's going to be five meters in the air, right? Because this is going to be the X, Y, Z. So let's grab this one. And we're going to put this at the bottom of our scene. Okay, so what happens with the point lights is that the point lights actually undo your ambient light in the scene. Okay, and you can do a lot with the point lights. So for instance, um, maybe we want to put this kind of closer to the ground and we can add as many lights as we want and this is where you can kind of get some really really interesting looking effects um, so maybe we want to do blue and like we want to do like a purple and let's move this one over like a meter okay so now we kind of have like a blue light and a purple light okay and then let's also get one of our we can do an ambient light. Okay. Um, and it, so if you don't put the type of light, it's just going to be like a regular directional light. Okay. So sorry, let me, let me clarify this. This is more like kind of your spotlight, general light. This is going to be um, a point light, which is just like light coming from one point. And then this is going to be like just your ambient light. So if we just try a regular light here, okay, that's gonna color things a bit more. And so you can actually like really, and so check it out, see how you can get some like really, really interesting color effects there. And then maybe let's give it like, so we got this red one. Let's, you know, let's make this like white. And then maybe we put this one kind of like far away from us. And let's just do this one blue. Okay, so the more ambient light you have, the more your like kind of regular colors will come through. Um, and then we can also do, let's just try one of those ambient lights as well. So let's try one of these. And then you can obviously like change the intensity. Um, we can change the, so again, type, you could do directional. Um, the reason you don't say directional is because that's the default value. Um, you can give it different angles. So there's like a lot of uh, different distances. So the more you mess around with the lights, like the more specific your scene is going to end up looking. Let's make this purple. So this will just kind of give it... Um, and then just like a general color. And then we can also maybe give it, let's give it an intensity. Let's give it an intensity and let's also give it an angle. So we'll give it an intensity of five and then an angle of, let's say 45. Oops, forgot my equal sign. All right, so as you can see, we get some like really, really interesting effects happening here. Can just do a little, a little view from the other side here. Okay, and so there is um, 
this is actually one of my lights right here. Okay, so you can get some really, really interesting effects by using the lights themselves, um, especially if you have a point light that's like, you know, off in the distance. Um, you can have a player kind of go to the point light and actually use the point light as an object itself.